This episode brought to you by Rocket Money, the personal finance app that helps lower your bills. Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Activity are we doing that'll tie into today's review? We're playing the Expendable Expendables. Oh, like the Stallone movies with the action stars? No, like the action stars that the Stallone movies were too embarrassed to put in. I choose Chris Klein. Oh! Oh! Well, I choose Dennis Rotman. Oh! Oh! Well, I'm bringing the pain of Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Oh! Oh! Oh, this looks like fun. Can you deal me in? Sure, grab a few cards. Alrighty. Got y'all now. I summon late 90s Ben Affleck! Ha! I have early 2000s Ben Affleck! Oh, that's nothing. I've got Joss Whedon Ben Affleck! <sighs> My friends, this is all for naught. For this game is over. Oh! oh! man, you win. Yeah, there's no way we're beating that. Yeah, there's so many duds he's been in, like... Like? Um... Have you seriously never reviewed a Steven Seagal movie? I don't think I have. How long have you been doing this job, man? He's the most famously bad action star there is. Hey, I saw Under Siege and Executive Decision, but only because he died in the first 10 minutes. Of course, everybody's watched that scene on repeat. Okay, but you've never seen any other Seagal movie, though. I guess not. What's a good one to check out? Y'all need to get laid. Look who's talking. You might have a point, though. This is kind of weird. Maybe. Should we just have a threesome right now? Sure. Steven Seagal has become one of action's biggest punchlines, if not the biggest punchline. Older action stars like Schwarzenegger and Stallone have certainly made duds, but have a good sense of humor about it. People love laughing at Seagal because he seems incapable of laughing at himself. And the film claimed to be the crowning achievement of taking himself so seriously it becomes hilarious is on deadly ground. Released in 1994, I would have assumed his most embarrassing work would be sometime after he became Jim Belushi microwaving into Elvis. But everyone says this is his passion project and directorial debut, encompassing everything that's hilarious about him without ever attempting to be humorous. It's entered the halls of laugh out loud infamy, and I'm finally gonna see what's so damn funny about it. So let's take a look at- Hey, Critic, do you have any edible lubricant? No, and for God's sakes, keep your panties on! Oh, these aren't mine. Let's take a look at On Deadly Ground. The film opens with- I can already tell this is gonna be too subtle for me. It then cuts to a fire on an oil rig, where we see Seagal coming in to save the what is that jacket. Oh my god, he looks like what Doc dressed Marty in to go back in time. Is this what you wear the whole film? Huh, looks like it. Oh, I am all on board for this garbage. Good to know the guy is gonna save everybody smokes a cigarette in an open oil fire. Hey, you, what's cooking? God damn it, Forrest, this is a disaster here. Aren't you already in love with this movie? Just the way they said those first two lines. Michael Caine plays Jennings, the owner of the oil company that's literally on fire. And I know it's gonna be hard to believe, but he might actually be funnier than Seagal in this. First off, my god, what accent is that? 
I'll expect your full report on my desk by morning. My oil is flowing all over the ocean instead of into my refinery where it's worth money. It's a small oil spill. Accidents happen. At first I thought it was his usual British accent, but it's so bad, I literally can't even guess what it's supposed to be. It was human error all the way. I suggest you take care of the Hugh Palmer problem first, Mr. Magruder. What's the position on Aegis 1? Maybe that's his idea of what a New England accent is supposed to sound like? Every year, hundreds of thousands of porcupine caribou make their way down from the Ogilvy Mountains. They come to feed off the tundra grasses. I can't take it. I have to look it up. I literally have no idea what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Give this movie everything. Everything, all the awards, all the world's money. We need more of this in our lives. Second, I don't know if it's the makeup or the lighting, but he looks like a Mission Impossible mask. It doesn't help either that his hair goes back and forth from being as black as the oil he owns and then a weird inconsistency of red and brown that I think I've only seen on Norman Osborn in Spider-Man comics. But come on, Seagal, surely you can be sillier than Kane in some way. What's your character's name? I'm telling you, Forrest, if those goddamn preventers caused this. That's some good silly. That's some good silly. But the son bitch made me use them anyway. The raccoon's trying to get on our back porch. Mama just chased him off with a broom. Why'd you fall back, you, before you say something stupid? What everybody told Sakal before he agreed to direct. I'm just like Jesus, but cooler. I walk on fire. He's so badass, he doesn't even need to walk away from the explosion. He lets the explosion walk around him. Because Steven Sakal doesn't catch fire. Fire catches Steven Seagal. His co-worker Hugh thinks Jennings is purposefully setting his rigs on fire, but Forrest Taft, yes, it's a name that just gets funnier the more you reveal. I think his middle name is the Thundercats logo. Doesn't see why he would do that. Now why the hell would I do that to myself on purpose? I don't know, I kinda asked him the same thing. I guess you did. He looks like Mrs. Doubtfire's face on a mannequin head. How am I taking his role crying over a green sock more seriously? Forrest relaxes in a local bar where he notices a Native American man being picked on by some bullies. Red skin piece of shit. Ah, uh, another one of those bars that seems to have no owner. Oh hey Jim, I haven't seen you since Dumb and Dumber. Don't you think you should change out that ridiculous costume though? You wanna play with me? Oh, you want a piece of this? I am afraid I'm fucking killing I'm gonna imagine you're Will Sasso. Uh oh, he's got a cowboy rope, everybody, and he clearly doesn't know how to use it. What, he got lasso someone with a gun next? What kind of moves are these? Whatever moves they are, they call for slow mo, clearly not originally shot in slow mo. And you can see why now these moves are worth showing in slow mo. Are you a man? Come on, man. I got a big pair of balls right between my legs. Let's settle this like men, with a hand-slapping game. Oh, you think I'm joking? Don't hurt him, Forrest. I'm sorry, when did this become a Hot Shots movie? Next, we'll do rock, paper, scissors, then patty cake. Wait, how do you lose patty cake? Like this. Oh. But at his heart, he's a therapist. What does it take to change the essence of a man? I need time to change. Now you might be thinking, surely I edited that down. He must have said more than that to break through. But nope. All he says is, what does it take to change the essence of a man? And the guy's like, well, oh, I've been bad. I need time to change. And maybe a few games of tiddlywinks, these recess activities really speak to my soul. And as if this scene couldn't get any more hilarious, look at how they end it. Thank you, my brother. We're about to go on a sacred journey. This journey will be good for all people. But you must be careful. Right. Was that really given to us as poorly as that was given to us? I think that was supposed to be like cryptic foreshadowing, but between the nonchalant way it's shot, the music drowning out what he's saying, and Seagal's complete lack of giving a shit, it comes across like he says this to everyone. Hey you, you know where the bathroom is? Down the hall, to the left. You're about to go on a sacred journey. This journey will be good for all people, but you must be careful. Wow, I didn't know my turds were so important. How do you make yourself feel better about being a director? Direct a good director to direct bad. We start with an out of focus world. We pull back, and then the whole pristine forest. All I know is whenever I have snow in something, it always, most of the time works. The earth is our home too. Who cares? 
we do. He looks like a de-aging effect that somehow made him older. Fuck these animals stink. Bring me a washcloth. We'll do it live. Oh, wait, I forgot me Texas accent. We'll do it live. Why is this so hard for you to understand? Get out! Get out! Aegis One is gonna be the biggest rig and refinery. You're really gonna finish this serious scene like that? And we lose all our rights. Worth billions of dollars a week. Okay, not like I was taking any of this seriously anyway. If you want to look like you gave a messy blowjob to Stay Puff, that's up to you. Forrest's friend Hugh, who just looks like a guy who's gonna be in this movie for a while, doesn't he? Discovers Jennings is setting the fires for financial gain and puts the proof on a disc. Because in the 90s, every MacGuffin was a disc. Jennings found out he... found out, and sends his top thugs to take care of it. Oh good, the guy who played Dr. Cox, this will finally add some subtlety. We've just come by to offer you a ride to Mr. Jennings' press conference. We like to talk to you over a few bullets. Sure. Gotcha there. I honestly don't want to have to ask you ten times. Have you listened to yourself lately? Have you? Okay, I know you're supposed to be intimidating, but why are you acting like he just broke up with you? Everything with you is I, I, I. There is no I in team. It is T-E-A-M. Team! There is an M-E, though, and that's what our relationship should be about. Me! Our hero also starts to put together the obvious bad guys or obvious bad guys, and he gets appropriately blown up at an oil rig. What is this, Arctic Iron Man? He actually looks better after he got blown up. Oh good, with his amazing understanding of Native Americans, I hope he does a crossover with Kathy Bates from North. Welcome to Chuck E. Crow's! I hear someone has a star birthday today! I only make fun because I know a better movie would represent this as, well, a better movie. My name is Forrest. Forrest Gump. Joan Chen plays Masu, the chief's daughter, as she translates what they're saying. They nurse him back to health and he pays him back the best way he knows how. By stealing their shit. If you're healthy enough to steal, you're healthy enough to make your journey. I'm in trouble, people are after me, and if they come here, you guys are in a lot of danger. Ah, the traditional Seagal approach of making the bad thing he's doing look like a good thing. But unlike everywhere else, it seems to work here. There was a time there were no people on the earth. A man burst forth from this sacred place. I'll give the film this. Alaska does look pretty. I've seen a lot of ego projects that don't even attempt to give their film a visual style, so I will give it a point for that. But then that pesky story comes back as the chief tells Forrest about a sacred man who is a spirit warrior who learns the way of nature and brings balance. Can you guess who that's gonna be? You will fight your most difficult battle, then you will find your way back. <laughs> He goes on a spiritual journey that clearly he thinks is artsy enough to show nudity. Well, good thing I like gilfs. Grandmas, I'd like to fuck. Thank you, boob lady! The henchmen from before show up, and by God, does he get any info from anyone when he acts like such a jilted teenager? Have you seen this man? God damn it. Does he have a clothespin on his balls? Why is he always so angry? Forrest comes back to discover what happened to the man who saved him. Um, we are men. He says, you're the spirit warrior. <laughs> A subscription I'm not using! Darn you, subscription! You piece of poop! Why did I sign up for that app that shows other people signing up for an app? It's just wasting money and I forgot about it. But, I tried to cancel it, but the only way to do it is calling their customer service and that takes like forever. I mean, they actually say you'll be on hold forever. Like, that's not- I'm not gonna talk to someone that way! But Rocket Money was able to take care of it for me easily. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. What's this guy doing with his hand? 
I'm asking questions I don't want to ask. Save me rocket money! They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. What's this guy? What's he wearing? Is he in purgatory? Where is this? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia. That's rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia. Go to rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia to get started today. Oh, it's a woman now. Like, that's somehow gonna make the scenario make more sense. So what the hell is going on? What? Is that her brain? What the hell am I watching? A chime! I don't have a segue, it just freaked me out too much. But you know what? With Chime's online checking account, you can enjoy a lot of free perks, like fee-free overdrafts up to $200. You can even get paid two days early with direct deposit. What's this idiot laughing at? Ditch the monthly fees! Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. You can access over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. Stop moving that way, lady. You're at work. People are looking at you. Send and receive money. Pay friends through Chime, Chime member or not, and cash out your money fee-free. Signing up for Chime takes minutes. So join the millions of other Chime members and sign up today. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's a house! Here's the mandatory stuff. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank, NA or Stripe Bank, NA members at FDIC. Bought me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Tooth! Masu decides to join Forrest on his quest as they make their way to his home, but the bad guys spot them. Ah! That was a lucky shot! Ah, my balls! My big balls between my legs! He of course takes them all out, which means Jennings starts outsourcing to a mercenary played by R. Lee Irby. Mr. Jennings, I'm stoned! Only two people come out of Texas, steers and people with bizarre British accents. How do you want him delivered? On deadly ground. Boom. Forrest gets ready to take out Jennings, but, you know, he really doesn't want to. I didn't want to resort to violence. I don't have a choice. You don't want to resort to violence? You literally played the hand slap game where the prize is punching someone. You ride good? Of course, I'm a Native American. I mean, you're not, but more than Seagal will ever be wearing that Arizona Walmart collection. Yeah, I love her as much as he complains we don't understand Native Americans. He doesn't even cast them in the main roles. They make their way to a hideout where he has all sorts of hidden weapons that, like he said, he hoped he would never have to resort to. Just in case. In case they declare war on some small country. Yeah. This would be like Mr. Miyagi saying he hates fighting, but he has a nuclear warhead under his workbench. Kind of mixed messages. The mercenaries do attack, but thankfully Forrest Home Alone's the entire forest. On that note, don't you wish Home Alone had just as good editing? Heads up! He's only a kid, Harry. That looks so real. Quick, get me a paintbrush. We'll paint our way across. Right after I paint a tunnel on a cave. That's the direction a lot of this is going. <laughs> Confirmed. He blew a hole in the... hole. They make their way to the latest rig. Jennings is about to sabotage and try to stop the henchmen inside. <laughs> I had to kill you. Sure, I could have knocked you out, but last resort. A big thank you to Pepsi for sponsoring this last resort. I'll be back. Gotta take a piss. <laughs> it was cooler when I smoked around explosives like an idiot. Who are you calling? Just gonna reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> that age grade. Oh, and in case anyone missed, Seagal also directed this movie. He's the kind of guy that would drink a gallon of gasoline so he could piss in your campfire. We are not dealing with a student here, we're dealing with a professor. This guy's a professional. If he reaches this rig, we're all gonna be in a big goddamn hole right in the middle of Alaska. Oh, sorry, my hard on hit one of the barrels here. <laughs> he raiders for the Lost Ark's Dr. Cox and continues to take out the henchmen, including Billy Bob Thornton. Open wide, sweetheart. I regret everything in between Bad Santa and Fargo! But how is he gonna take out Arlie Ermy in both the coolest and lamest way possible? 
Well, I've never been so manly emasculated. Good night, sir. Take it. Oh my God, slow-mo shots that were originally shot in slow-mo. Did someone actually plan something in this? You macho man with a coat of honor, you won't shoot me in the back. I guess he does know how to use a lasso. That scene before, that was just a tease. Now, it's full on Twinkie the Kid time. Get ready for the one good line in the movie. Shoot me, God! I wouldn't dirty my bullets. It's a little second grade, but I kind of love it. But he won't kill him. He's not that kind of... Alright, I guess he is! Last resort! This is for my father. Come on, this way. Okay, maybe this way. They get out of the rig before it blows. So the way to stop rigs from blowing up is to blow them up, I guess. As Forrest makes a big speech at the Alaskan State Capitol. I've been asked by Mr. Etok and the Tribal Council to speak thank you to all the brothers and sisters that have come here today representing this cause. Yes, I chose this jacket knowing full well you would all be here. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. He makes a big speech about how oil is bad that feels more like a G.I. Joe PSA than the end of a cinematic narrative. Because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over a hundred years. True, we use God knows how much oil and gas for the explosions in this movie, but when Sokol does it, it isn't wrong. Millions and millions of gallons of oil are now destroying the ocean and the many forms of life it supports. So get this, in the test screening of this film, this original speech was 11 minutes long. But people apparently started walking out because they were so bored and... I'm honestly surprised it took him that long. So he chopped it down to four minutes. Don't worry though, it still feels like 11 minutes. As long as there's profit to be made from the polluting of our Earth, companies and individuals will continue to do what they want. Well, that just makes too much sense from a guy who's friends with a tyrant whose number one export is oil. This is awful! But man, everybody's right. It's awful in all the best ways. <laughs> I'm so glad this was my intro to bad Steven Seagal, and that it's a project he had complete control over. I guess it's the only film he's ever directed, but man, I got to see more. This is the kind of laugh out loud ego trip bad that you gotta see to believe. It's absolutely horrendous, but by God, I loved every minute of it. It's spectacularly awful and awfully spectacular. Enough that I think I can return to that game. Have you achieved satisfaction? Oh god, yes. So have we. Yeah, I don't need to know anymore about that. Let's just keep playing. Alrighty. Ah, I choose Pamela Anderson! Well, I choose Guy from Speed 2! Well, I choose Jay Leno. Wait, that was a thing? I wish it wasn't. Like most things with Jay Leno. Nice try, everyone. But like before, this game is officially over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah, yeah no, that makes about. sense, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Checks. Thank you, my brother. We're about to go on a sacred journey. This month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing the Center for Victims of Torture. I've done this charity a couple times, and there's a reason. I literally cannot think of anything worse. We've used the word torture as a way to emphasize things we don't like to go through, but these are people that have literally gone through the worst things you can imagine. This center heals victims of torture through personal care worldwide, strengthens partners who heal torture survivors, and advocate for the protection and care of torture survivors. Heavy stuff I know, but you can help out. If you want a cameo of me saying happy birthday or good luck or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. If you're like, nah, you suck, consider checking out this charity anyway. They're wonderful people doing wonderful work, and you can play a big part in helping with the healing.